The show in which we dig up sci-fi shows that no longer get, or have never gotten the attention they deserve, and attempt to bring them back into the light. This episode... If you had trouble reading that title, I'm not entirely surprised. It is a 1950s movie on a 1990s VHS, which was bought secondhand from a video store so God knows how many times it was watched before I acquired it. But what you're looking at here is Forbidden Planet. Now, I'm not saying that Forbidden Planet is a totally forgotten movie, and it is still remembered by many as a classic. However, it is nowhere near as large as it should be, and I myself only came across it when I started to actively look for shows to watch. As far as pop culture references go, I can only think of two that I've ever come across. One, obviously being during science fiction double feature, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and two, during Andrew Gordon's 1980s paper, The Empire Strikes Back, Monsters from the Id, which compares the monster from Forbidden Planet with Darth Vader and Luke's relationship. What you're seeing here is the VHS's cover, which as you can see is in the classic 50s style sci-fi poster design. Interestingly, it features Robbie the Robot holding Alter, which, as far as I'm aware, never happens during the film. Helpfully, if you have absolutely no idea how to use a videotape, this one comes with instructions. This movie does a lot of things right. The props, the set, and the costume design are still fantastic, and the acting, while a little dated, still holds up very well today. There are scenes in it that can be described as breathtaking, and when they attempt to show the scale of the world that they're depicting, they do an absolutely fantastic job. You really believe that the world is as large as they tell you it is, and quite honestly I have no idea how they would have done this effect before special effects became what they are today. Speaking of special effects, unlike the early 3D graphics of the 90s, this movie's special effects still hold up today as well. Just look at this scene here. If a crazed gunman was to pin me down and demand that I classify this movie, I would have to classify it as sci-fi horror. The movie follows a team of Earthlings stranded on a colonial planet far from Earth. The colonists have been killed off by an unknown threat all bar two, and that threat seems to be coming for them now. It has a lot of suspense, the mystery keeps you guessing, and you do start to really fear the monster. As far as Forbidden Planet making its own pop cultural references, we do see a reference to the Three Laws of Robotics, with Dr. Edward Morbius demonstrating that Robbie the Robot is incapable of harming the Lieutenant. Pointed at the Commander. Aim right between the eyes. Helpless, locked in a sub-electronic dilemma between my direct orders and his basic innovations against harming rational beings. And I rather think that Lieutenant Adams would have been far more hesitant to take part in that demonstration if he had just watched Robocop. Now, as I said in the introduction, Sci-Fi Minecart only shows sci-fis I believe are worth watching. Therefore, you already know this is a positive review. However, while this is a great movie, it's not completely without flaws. There is one part of the film that really grates my cheese. 
the cheese grating aspect that I completely despise is the romantic subplot in this film. Firstly, there is a lot of really awkward taking advantage of the female lead by the soldiers, making all of the characters involved very unlikable and seedy. Well, it's good for you though, it stimulates the whole system. As a matter of fact, you can't be in tip top health without it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Only too happy to show you. At first, our hero, J.J. Adams, calls one of the other soldiers out on his behavior. Giving the treatment, are you? Lieutenant Farman, don't say the word, sir. I, uh, I know there are a lot of pressing duties waiting for me back at the ship, and, and Frank does have its little privileges. Mm -hmm, sir. And you can depend on it, Lieutenant, that those privileges won't be stretched into taking your kind of advantages. What? Right, this only to take the exact same advantages one scene later. Further on this unbelievably bad romantic subplot, J.J. Adams and Alta were only together four times. Once when they met and a brief introduction was shared, once when he caught one of his crew taking advantage of her ignorance, and he made some pretty atrocious victim-blaming comments, You can't run around like that in front of men, particularly not a space wolf like Farmer. So for Pete's sake, go home and put on something that'll, uh... Anyway. And once when he killed her tiger. <laughs> Each of these encounters were shown in real time, and off the top of my head probably lasted about two minutes. And yet, when they encountered for the fourth time, this is the exchange. <laughs> Because of this zero to light speed love plot development, the relationship just feels rushed, unrealistic, and very yawn worthy. Despite this pitfall, Forbidden Planet is still a fantastic movie with a mystery that will keep you on the edge of your seat. So go out and rent a copy now. Well, not from my local video store because I bought that copy. Thanks for watching. I have been and still am Grim Grindel. Remember kids, always rewind your videos before returning them to the store. Close the blast doors! They are still coming through. This is impossible!